I have been waiting a very long time to do this, and I'm so happy we've reached to this point because today I'm going to be reviewing the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion. This is two years in the waiting. Me and many fans out there have been excitedly waiting for this game to come out, and I've been playing it for the last two weeks. I've beaten it. It's taken 60 plus hours. I've done everything from beating all the bosses from start to finish, all the optional stuff. I've explored the world, every nook and cranny, every environmental storytelling piece that I can get my hands on. I left no stone unturned. And I'm, I came out of it with this feeling of complete elation. I think Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, and I'll say it from now, is perhaps one of the best experiences I've had, and not only this year, but in many, in the last couple of years as a fellow gamer. So I wanna give a disclaimer before I jump into this review and say that Elden Ring and these Soulsborne games that are developed by From Software Studios, they are not for everyone. When I give these praises, it's because I'm someone who loves this type of game. And so it's important to give a disclaimer that Soulsborne Games, Elden Ring, is a type of experience that's not catered for everyone, and that's okay. It's unapologetic in a sense. There's a massive learning curve that comes with it. There are challenges that if you step into it for the first time, it could overwhelm you understandably but if you take the time to learn the fundamentals to get past that learning curve there is something astronomically beautiful about the experience you have with any of the souls born for the very first time so i am going to break down my review into three categories first exploration and design on this first segment next one will be difficulty and boss fights and last segment will be story and world building so let's talk about the exploration and design of Shadow of the Earth Tree. It takes place in the lands of shadow, a, a, a land that has been veiled away from the very god Merica from the lands between. And so it has so much mystery behind it from all the trailers we've gotten the chance to see. But once you step into the lands of shadow, you are honestly overwhelmed, but in a, in a great way, honestly. I, here's the thing. <laughs> Hidetaka Miyazaki, the creative director of From Software Studios, went on a few interviews before the game's release, and he downplayed the sheer size of this game's world map. He said, oh, it's just as big as Limgrave. Yeah, if you took Limgrave and Caleb combined it, and then you layered it three times over, this is how massive the Lands of Shadow is, and I love it all the more for it because the exploration factor is addicting. It is, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Dark Souls 1 world, uh, world design, where everything is interconnected in a complex and branching kind of way. And so where you are probably riding your horse up on a plateau and you see a river stream, you're like, I, can, I know I can get there, but how can I get there? 10 hours later, you finally find that one path that takes you down the river stream. And next thing you know, the river stream is going even further down and it takes you to a dungeon. And then when you get out of the dungeon, you find yourself uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a big boss fight confrontation. And once you clear that, you're in this massive dark forest. It was mind blowing. I, ha I was speechless at times as some of the exploration that I was doing in this game and I just could not stop. There's something about the way the Lands of Shadow is designed. It keeps you want to explore it and unravel it and unfold it. You wanna know more, you wanna find the next boss, you wanna find the next piece of item that provides environmental storytelling. But the world itself is kind of already telling you much of what's happened or what is of much is gonna happen. And so it's really just clever level design all throughout it is it is interconnected it is dense it is complex and every time you find one path it ends up branching into multiple paths and it you get kind of giddy you're like i don't know what to pick i i guess i'll go this way and i'll come back five hours later to the up and to the other one and it's just i i just could not stop 
honestly. I There were times I had a session where I played for like eight to nine hours straight and it was just pure world exploration. If that doesn't tell you anything, guys, I don't know what will. That is how masterfully crafted the world design of Lands of Shadow. There is so much mystery that you are dying to find out, especially if you're someone who's invested with the story and the characters and the events. Going into this, going into the Lands of Shadow is this <laughs> like exciting attempt to figure out the truth, the revelations, what's how what really happened here? And it it brought back this like this childhood wonder of when I used to play games and you know and I, I just would love the adventure of going into a new world and trying to figure out everything, you know. I, it was beautiful. It was lands of the the, the the Shadow of the Earth Tree world design is phenomenal. It's visually a spectacle. Everywhere you go, it's screenshot worthy. And it all builds on the mystery of the world in Elden Ring. There is some horrors. There's some terrors. There's moments of calmness. There are moments of revelation. Uh, there's moments of darkness and war and, 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 and just destruction. There's different, there's, there, there's different feelings and emotions that you get when you go to different parts of the Lands of Shadow. And it is absolutely phenomenal. And this is just the exploration and design. We're still not even going to, we're, we're still going to cover some other stuff. So that's why the review isn't over yet. We're going to take a short break. I got my notes. Don't worry about it. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about difficulty and boss fights. This is at the core of any Soulsborne game. And it's important to talk about Shadow of the Earth Tree because it did come with a little bit of controversy. So let's talk about that right here on the Evening Buzz. Stay tuned. Pulse 95. We're still continuing our lengthy review for Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion, uh, Elden Ring. Uh, right before the break, I talked about the exploration, the design. The Lands of Shadow uh, is a interconnected, dense and complex open world map that has so much to unfold and unravel that every time you step into it, it is a, a very rewarding experience, an addicting experience. It brings me, it brings out the adventurer in, in me. And then that's what I love so much about it. But now we talk about, let's talk about the ugly here, the controversy, difficulty and boss fights. Now, Something interesting about the expansion is that they came out with a bit of a difficulty a scaling mechanic, something similar to a, something similar to the uh, Sekiro Shadow Die Twice mechanic, where basically you have to go out into the world and find something called Scatter Tree Fragments. Um, and basically, when you acquire these fragments, you can upgrade your Shadow Blessing. So what they've done is they've um, scaled down the, uh, um, the amount of damage you're able to inflict and the amount of damage you're able to uh, negate. Um, and so this has drastically changed the uh, balance, so to speak, uh, or you could say the difficulty of this game for players. Some have been able to accommodate to it, but there are those who have been very vocal that this difficulty scaling has made it extremely, extremely unfair to the point that it they started review bombing the game after its release. And this is where I talk about the boss fights. The boss fights are perhaps some of the some some of the boss fights in this in this expansion are the some of the most difficult and the most humbling experience you're going to have and you're going to be humbled fast. <laughs> I when I jumped into Rolana for the first time and she was by the way my first boss I was completely surprised I was overwhelmed getting one shot just one mistake and that's it I'm like uh-huh and that is the sort of imp first per first impression you get from the expansion it's like okay this is what's gonna be like for the rest of the game now for those who love that challenge they're gonna go for it this is what they yearn for they want that sort of unsurmountable obstacle to try to climb 
But there are those who cannot tolerate, cannot tolerate that perhaps, maybe, the difficulty borderlines from being challenging but fair to, okay, this is just downright broken. This has not been tested well enough or it's downright unfair. And it created so much divisiveness to the point that uh, the developers actually had to put in a patch to alleviate the difficulty through the shadow blessing system. So that means those who uh, who are upgrading the shadow blessing the, in the first 10 levels, they are able to inflict just slightly more damage, which could help make the boss fights a bit easier. But, uh, you know, Hidedaka Miyazaki also emphasized in an interview while the game was out is that um, if I were to make the game easier, it would break the experience. And I, I totally agree with him. As someone who's played the Soulsborne games, there is a philosophy, a clear cut philosophy that's built into these, in, built into the core of these games. And that is, it is only as difficult as you want it to be. And what that really means is that you have so many variations, so many combinations of arsenals at your disposal that you could really find various approaches to boss fights. I found myself, especially with some of the major boss fights, having to recalibrate and, and revise my build time and time again. I ended up using weapon categories I've never tried before. Halberts, daggers, crossbows, shields. It, and to be honest, I'm kind of grateful for that because it allowed me to diversify my playstyle. I found entirely new tactics and strategies uh, to find to outmaneuver and, and outsmart the, the, the boss encounters. And it did take a very long time, believe me. Rolana was like 88 tries for me. Um, others were up to 60, up to uh, my, the most I had was about 90. And there are difficult bosses, yes, but that doesn't mean they're not imp they're not impossible. That's that's the point here, and I think it's it definitely demands a little bit of patience uh, and a little bit of perseverance from your end, to, and and accepting that maybe your playstyle isn't gonna be entirely foolproof, because that's the point of those boss fights is that they're designed, they're over they're so overly tuned that they have now been uh, now they've they've become accommodating to all sorts of player exploitation and, and player uh, maneuverability. Any build that goes into these boss fights is going to be severely challenged. And I think that is a good thing. I said before, the game is only as hard as you want it to be. Be able to uh, be open-minded and look into all the uh, hundreds to thousands of different combinations of weapons, of, of uh, armor sets, of gear that you could reutilize into these boss fights. You can find yourself creating entirely new play styles uh, from scratch. And I'm kind of grateful for that. Back to the boss fights. Um, I think each and every single one of them were creatively designed. They are so unique. They're so fresh. And at times, some of them are out of this world. Um, I was really uh, underestimating the, the the boss encounters and the challenge behind it. But more than more than that, I was underestimating the the, the developers' uh, attempt at really making a diversified catalog of boss fights. This is perhaps the most diversified I've ever seen in any of the Soulsborne, and more so than anything. Um, I think, I think some of the boss fights in these are perhaps not only the hardest, but some of my most favorite from the, the entire series. Uh, some of them are perhaps even a homage to some other boss fights that you know from previous games. And it is, <laughs> when you beat one, you, I, I have to emphasize this, when you finally overcome fighting one of these boss fights, it is so gratifying. It is so rewarding. I went through the trouble of not using summons. I felt like it, you know, trivialized some of the previous experiences I've had. I, I went for a solo run. It was a lot more difficult. It was a lot more frustrating. I had, I was pulling my hair at some points, 
But when you beat it, oh my God, I was screaming from the top of my lungs. It is such an arduous but rewarding experience all throughout. And these are honestly some of the most memorable boss fights I've had in a very long time. I'll look back fondly in those in those moments and, and remember the challenge, the, the strategies, <laughs> the fact that I got humbled quite a few times. And I feel like I, I've become a better player, a, a, a more, I would say, a, a more diversified player. I have now been, I'm very open to trying all sorts of uh, tactics and strategies in a Soulsborne now. I have always just been a very kind of strict build. I just want to play faith and strength, nothing else. In the DLC, I became a hybrid of so many different, uh, you know, roles. Um, and I, I really love that. I, I just, I surprised myself with the way I ended up uh, choosing my play styles. And it also adds to the fact that some of the weapons you find in this expansion help tremendously because some of them are a little bit broken. They have been fixed, but man, when they were out, I've seen some of the exploits that people were utilizing. It was funny for its time, but obviously those things do usually get balanced out. Overall, amazing boss fights, a difficulty that honestly, I'm willing to accept and be okay with because there is a, there is a core philosophy behind it. And it's one that after, after overcoming everything, I understand it at a very deep level. Some others won't, I understand. Which is why, like I said, and this is the third time I'm gonna say it, it's only as difficult as you want it to be. And I think that is the beauty of the difficulty in the boss fights in Elden Ring, especially in the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. I'm gonna take a short break. We got one more segment, and the next one is gonna be I'm gonna be covering is story and world building. I gotta talk about this. It's a big deal, and it'll be the final part of my review, so be sure to tune in for that right here to the evening buzz. Pulse 95. It's been a pretty beefy review when it comes to Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion. And um, it honestly, I, I don't even think I even have enough time to cover it as much as I'd love to. But this past hour, I've been talking about the exploration, the design, the difficulty, the boss fight. And now I wanna talk about story and world building, which honestly is something that's from Software Studio is quite notorious for. You see, they create they create these games with, yes, there is a premise, there's a setting, there's a theme, there is a story. But most players have come to understand that the story isn't at the forefront and it isn't really um, as obvious or as clear cut as you want it to be. It is, a, you basically step into a world and you kind of have to piece in the together the small bits of hints and clues about what really transpired from item descriptions, from cryptic di NPC dialogues, from cryptic cinematic cutscenes, whichever they usually would love to give us. And it is extremely intentional because it it's it's done in a way where they want players to really engage themselves with the world and try to unravel the story and their own interpretation. There is the core storyline, but there's a lot of little plot holes and little vague and mysterious things that took place and it, you know, through characters, through items, through environments. And it's really up to you to piece it together and figure it out yourself. And that's why Shadow of the Earth Tree kind of takes that approach again. But I do appreciate that this time around, some of the some of the NPC dialogue you get is quite revealing and perhaps very cohesive, a lot more cohesive than uh, things that were presented in previous games, even in the Elden Ring base game. Um, there are some, if you're someone who has truly invested themselves in the lore and the story, of the uh, of the world of Elden Ring, you will be rewarded tremendously as you explore and unravel the dark truth and revelations of the Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion. There are things here that finally give that give 
all sorts of big closures to some big players, some big characters. I don't want to go into spoilers. It's not my place to say that. But you know who I'm talking about when I say, for example, Merica, Mikola, Melania. And I want, that's it. I'm not going to say anything more than that. But if you're someone who is invested and has put in the work and has studied the lore, Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to be such an absolute treat as you unravel it because there is so much uh, that gets revealed and and it still again remains cryptic there's only so much they tell you and then it's back to being a little bit vague and i think that's again you want them wanting the player to kind of fill in with their own imagination what are certain things we know that these things happen but what about the in-between why did it happen how did it happen still a little bit of that is left for the player's interpretation and i really appreciate it but i do appreciate again that there was a little bit more cohesiveness especially from npcs and we got quite a few uh, npcs in this story the companions of mikola who uh, are at the at basically at the center of some of the biggest quest lines in the dlc quest lines that i urge you to do because those quest lines actually unlock some major areas in the game that you probably will miss out on and those quest lines will even play a factor in the end game a little bit but of course it's about the weapons it's about the gear it's the reward that you get from following through those quest lines and don't worry if you're someone who feels a bit lost when you're doing those npc quest lines you can always check guides and th this kind of environmental storytelling helps so much with the world building you and like many others i know have been fascinated with the world of elden ring and it is just as fascinating in the lands of shadow um and like i said if you've invested there is something here that honestly does pay off but one of my criticism is that there is some elements that have never been given closure to. I won't say too much, but there's two main characters, um, Melina and Godwin. Those don't get the most uh, closure, unfortunately, in the story. And as someone who's kept up to date with the lore, it's a shame that it's kind of left that way, but perhaps creatively, it's deliberate. Maybe it's okay to not know what really happened or what who what is gonna happen. That is the charm of from software's storytelling and so it's time for me to rate this game elden ring shadow of the earth tree is a perfect 10 out of 10 despite its shortcomings despite the insane difficulty that people have uh, become very divisive about i think that shadow of the earth tree has set the, an entirely new bar it has set an entirely new standard for video games this is, was an expansion for 40 bucks and yet it gave us at the value of something that a triple a studio usually can't even accomplish for 70 dollars for a hundred dollars it is absolutely insane the the amount of value we got for what we paid for and it's worth every penny and i really hope that when the game awards does take place that the shadow of the earth tree expansion gets nominated for game of the year honestly it needs at least that that sort of merit it needs that sort of accolade because it really is at that level it's insane what from software studios has accomplished with this expansion how much they've downplayed how much they delivered and more and exceeded our expectations and it makes me so happy to see what they're gonna do next they are the studio everyone should be paying attention to in the years to come because they are making some of the best video game experiences out in the industry today and that is why elden ring shadow of the earth tree is a perfect 10 out of 10 amazing exploration and design fantastic boss fights which albeit little difficult perhaps borderline unfair but still amazing nevertheless a story revelations that help really pay off for those who kept with the lore and the world building is just absolutely fantastical. Highly recommended, but I always have to say that this is a game not for everyone, but for those who take the time to master the fundamentals, the learning curve, and really take their time and effort to 
master this game. And when you do, there is something absolutely gratifying and, re and rewarding at the end of the road. So yeah, and that pretty much concludes my review for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. If you haven't gotten the chance to play it, this is perhaps the highest praise I could ever get it. If you've gotten the chance to play it yourself, do let me know. Would love to hear from you guys right here on the Evening Buzz. But let's wrap it up and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next Evening Buzz next Friday from 8 till 9 p.m. Keeping you guys busy and entertained all throughout the week and shift right here on Pulse 95. This is Mikel Atia signing out. Have a good one. If you liked this episode of The Evening Buzz, go, go, go. drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Pulse.